What's going on, my PT peeps? My walking dead family, my fighters on one eyebrow, also known as PT. You don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about Fear of the Walking Dead, season seven, episode 15, the hundredth episode of the series. Obviously, spoiler warning for Fear of the Walking Dead. If you haven't seen the episode, you don't want to know this. Stop watching now. Well, like I said, it's the hundredth episode of the series. That's a great milestone for any show, but it's basically Alicia passing out, being transported all around, taking a lot of naps, and it's kind of a crazy episode. Well, the opening is this little character right here that we find out is an eight-year-old Alicia. But it starts with Alicia being taken out of the tower, only to go back to the tower, only to go back to the rafts, back to here, back to there. She sees a bird. We don't know if it's there or not, but we see the rabbi. It's just everybody's taking care of Alicia. And it's Alicia's last episode. You wouldn't know that from watching the episode. You had to watch inside the episode with one of the showrunners to find out. Well, Alicia is basically surrounded by a bunch of people with rafts. Where did all these rafts come from? Where are they going? Why did they do this sooner? And I got a lot of questions. Now, we kind of thought something was up with this little girl because the only person that was seeing this little girl was Alicia. And it's basically Alicia talking to herself. Because again, we find out inside the episode that this is supposed to be an eight-year-old Alicia. So basically Alicia is finding herself and I don't know how she just gets up away from the rafts and walks away, but it's supposed to be the end of Alicia's journey here. So it's all about Alicia and that's basically what this story and episode is about, which is okay. Alicia Debnam Carey did a great job with the episode and it's gonna be crazy to see that she's not going to be around. Hopefully she returns in a future season, but to be determined. Like I said, Alicia just walks away from the beach and the rafts and she's going to just follow her younger self. So she's basically following herself, she's talking to herself and she thinks she sees the little girl but turns out to be a walker and it's a bunch of like jump scares where it's like ah, poof, ah, like it's a lot of like just flashes of walkers. But either way, Alicia struggles but she kills the walker. The walker even bites her Terminator arm and then Alicia freaks out, sees herself becoming a walker. And she doesn't want to become a walker. I mean, who would want to become a walker, right? So she was saving this bullet in her gun, her last bullet, to put herself down. And she has flashbacks of all these different walkers and her getting bit. And it's just one of those things where it's overdone. Alicia just passes out, I don't know how many times, five or six times, but she sees her hand and she doesn't want to become a walker as she looks in a puddle she sees herself and a reflection, but this is living Alicia. This is Walker Alicia. And then she just passes out. And I hate when they do that in episodes, shows, movies, whatever, where she passes out and then boop, she's just somewhere else. Like, how did she get into the MRAP? Well, as she's in the MRAP, she sees her younger self. So every time she sees her younger self, that person's not there. So she's just talking to herself. It's kind of like Rick with the phone. And again, they've done this in the Walking Dead universe before. There's a good shot of her residual limb, the Terminator arm that she uses as a weapon. This was written by the two showrunners, Ian and Andrew. So that explains some things somewhat. It just feels like the last season of Game of Thrones. Like they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to wrap it up. They don't know how to say goodbye to a character. But again, Alicia's looking for stuff. She comes across a tape. It, I guess is Madison's tape that has Amina on it. That is the title of the episode, Amina. So again, every time Alicia is talking to this young girl, she's just talking to herself, which is kind of weird after you realize what's going on here. Like, hmm, so is it the fever? I'm guessing it's the fever, right? It just makes sense that she's got the fever. This reminds me a lot of Spaceballs, fool you. But ultimately, Alicia doesn't have any bullets in the gun. She's saving her last bullet to put herself down, so she's not worried about that. But how is this little girl holding the gun if she's not there? A lot of stuff is like, how did she kill Walker? She's not there. How did she do this? She's not there. Pretty awesome Walker right here. Alicia struggles to put this Walker down. Again, flashbacks of previous Walkers. Alicia goes down yet again. This is basically the Alicia falls down episode. She falls down and passes out. So she has the fever. She exerts herself. She passes out. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So as you watch this, great prosthetics of the walker, by the way. 
Alicia takes out the walker, but young Alicia comes in with a hammer and kills the walker. Again, how did she do this? I guess Alicia is just killing the walker, but you know, cause young Alicia is not actually there. There is no young Alicia. So she goes to the tower and look at all these walkers. It's like so many walkers. But again, Alicia is like, I can't get in there. What do we have to do? Cause young Alicia says that she got bit and she can go inside, flashback to Will. There's a lot about that stuff. There's a lot of flashbacks and small little things that you might've missed in the episode because it happens very quickly. Alicia, yet again, passes out just looking at the tower. But young Alicia says, my friend in the tower helped me. You gotta go back to the tower. As Alicia is kind of in and out of consciousness, she sees her younger self killing a walker. Not sure how it happened. It's subconscious, you know, symbolism, whatever you want to call it. Alicia is rescued by the group again because young Alicia calls for help over the radio, but it turns out it was older Alicia and stuff starting to get more clear here that young Alicia, well, the young girl is not actually there. We don't really know that until later on when it's said, but it's like, okay, what? Yeah, you were alone. There was nobody else there. And it's gotta be frustrating for the group to be like, we got these rafts, we gotta go. We can't babysit Alicia. We see Josiah again. I believe his name's Josiah, right? But it's cool to see some characters come back around again. I wish that character was around more. It was pretty cool with him and Morgan and Rufus, but Alicia's on the radio trying to figure out what to do to further the story. She looks at the gun, what to do? Should he take herself out? Nah, we'll get to that later in the episode. So basically it's a lot of what are we gonna do Go to the rafts, not go to the rafts. Alicia needs help. It's just really strung out. But as Alicia walks with June, Luciana, Sarah, and you know just everybody here, who evidently took out all the walkers easily this time, took out the walkers around the tower. They're just hanging at the tower now. They got in pretty easily now all of a sudden, but Alicia's like, nah, I have to go into the tower because she has to say her goodbyes to Strand and everybody. Again, it's Alicia's goodbye episode. As Alicia goes to the roof, she talks to her younger self. I have to say, the plants and the stuff on here look pretty darn good. They were on fire, weren't they? But Alicia realizes that her younger self, again, she doesn't know that yet, but this unknown, unnamed little girl is her subconscious saying that her friend is Victor Strand, who can help her. So I guess it's just a symbolism thing where Alicia has to make up with all the cast because again, she's going to say goodbye. Yet again, she passes out on top of the roof. Then she wakes up and somehow walks down in the tower because she has to go find Strand. So Strand and Alicia have their heart to heart. They talk about Madison. There's just little glimpses of prior stuff over the series, which is nice. Strand is still alive, yet again, how is this guy still alive? There's little flashes of Madison on the tape and also thoughts at the stadium. Alicia thinks about killing herself, but she can't do it. As she has flashes of other walkers, here's one at the sub. But was she there at this time? I don't think so, she was in the bunker, right? She sees Nick dying. We just get to see these flashbacks and stuff happen there. Charlie. Well, Alicia wasn't in the tower with Charlie here, so how could she see that? I don't know, but she sees her people, basically. Daniel, Will, Morgan, her mom, Luciana. It's just quick, they're quick little moments. And it's kind of weird that Alicia's not gonna be around anymore, and Madison's coming back. We know that from the trailer for 7.16, the finale. But they're really hinting at Madison here. And it would have been cool if we didn't know she was coming back. Talking Dead ruined that. Then we see the bird. Is it a real bird? Is it not? The window is broken by young Alicia. Again, how did it happen? She's not there. So I guess Alicia just broke the window, right? So every time young Alicia did it, Alicia actually did it. She doesn't remember doing it. Is the bird there or not? Is it her subconscious? We'll talk about that at the end of the video. But we see that Alicia releases the bird. And it would mean something if we saw this before. But we're just pulling stuff out of thin air. Like, yeah, she rescued a bird. Great. She's talking to her younger self. Great. And I kind of liked it and see where they were going with it, but it was like forced and doesn't really make sense for things. Then back to the rafts. So we see Daniel, Grace, and Charlie. They didn't leave yet. 
because Alicia is important to say goodbye, that's basically why they didn't leave. They'd be like, come on, we got to go. Enough of this babysitting this lady. Let's go. But ultimately, they have to wait around and they set up all their rafts and their supplies. Where do they get this stuff? I'm not sure. But they're highlighting and showing you everybody's there, except for Morgan. He's on a raft, sailed away. We see Charlie is being taken care of by Daniel, who was shot in the upper chest. Then we see Josiah has joined the group. I believe his name is Josiah, right? Could be wrong. But we see that Luciana and June want to wait for Alicia. But magically, as Luciana gets a call over the radio, Alicia and Strand are at the MRAP. So now they know where to go yet again to leave the rafts, to go get Alicia, to go get Strand, to come back to the rafts. So as June is caring for Alicia, she's waking up. I think it's like three times we heard it. She's waking up. So Alicia wakes up and she's on a raft, but she's not gonna use the raft. She's gonna stay where everybody leaves. And I know of at least two times, June says it, I believe Sarah and probably three rabbi says she's waking up. So Alicia wakes up and she's in and out of consciousness the entire episode, which is kind of annoying. And I had to say, I was worried about Alicia popping the raft with her little arm, but Morgan and Alicia talk. And it's basically Alicia says goodbye to everybody. It's Alicia's farewell goodbye episode, which kind of sucks because I kind of like Alicia. She says bye to Charlie. They don't really talk about Nick, which I thought they should. Daniel's still alive, going to take care of Charlie. You can see the shot in the upper chest, but he's okay. Sherry and Dwight say thank you to Alicia. It's just like, no problem. It's what I do, right? And again, I feel like I'd rather have Alicia than Madison, but Alicia's going bye-bye and Madison returns next episode. It's interesting when Strand and Luciana are by each other. Luciana's like scared of Strand. But Luciana runs away. Strand gets into the boat. And right here, I was like, don't pop the raft, Alicia. But Strand gets into the raft or boat, whatever you want to call it. And Alicia's like, I'm not going with you. Which doesn't make sense if you think about it. But again, it's Alicia's last episode. So she has to leave the group. And so Alicia and Strand tell each other they love each other. And it's a nice little moment. But Strand's terrible. You're a villain. You're not this great guy. So we don't feel bad. At least I didn't feel bad for Strand. Kind of felt bad for Alicia. But again, as Alicia says bye, look at all these rafts. Look at all these supplies. Look at all these boats. Look at all this stuff. Why didn't they do this sooner? Why fight for the tower? Just get on these rafts and go. Where did they get them? But Strand's like, see ya. Reminds me of Gendry from Game of Thrones. Alicia's like, peace. I'm going to do my own thing. Going to film another show. See ya. But as she sits on the beach, she passes out yet again. She's like, oh, boof. I'm going to take a nap. And when she wakes up, she looks darn good. We see the bird come around. She's wearing makeup. She looks great. How long does she sleep for? 12 hours? But now she looks like she has no flu, no fever, no this, no symptoms, no whatever. Right? But she gets up. Everyone's gone. Where do they go? They sailed away. Alicia's on her own. Alicia is there. Again, she looks great. She gets some water because she's thirsty and just don't understand why she's doing well now. You just don't break a fever like that. She's had a fever for so many episodes, so long, right? Again, she checks her head. Man, I feel great. This is going to be good. She checks the counter, the Geiger counter, whatever they are for the radiation and everything is okay, I'm guessing. So she is all right, she's alive. Some people are thinking she died here, but per inside the episode with the showrunner, she's a triumphant hero. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, don't worry. But ultimately, Alicia talks to herself yet again. Whether it's symbolism or whatever you wanna call it, it's just kinda weird if you think about it, it reminds me of Fight Club. Like Tyler Durden's not there. Sorry, spoiler warning. But we're gonna see what happens with Alicia in the future. This is her last episode per inside the episode. If you didn't watch that and you didn't know that, there'd be no inclination that Alicia is never gonna be seen again, or at least won't be seen for a long time. Because kind of like Althea, she's not gonna be seen. She wasn't seen after the first part of season seven. So Alicia sees a walker. She uses the gun and her final bullet to kill the walker. It's symbolic that she's going to be okay. She's going to beat it. She's going to survive. She uses her last bullet to kill a lone walker, which is kind of a mistake. What if you run into other trouble? But either way, she puts the gun in her back pocket. 
puts on her gas mask and goes back to the tower, I'm guessing because she talks about Padre and to help the people that heard her message. So is Padre a real thing? Morgan talks about it in the episode. Hopefully we'll find out in the season seven finale that Padre is actually a real thing. But right now it's just a build up for nothing. And this is how the episode ends. So Alicia's last episode is her walking back into the smoke and the haze. Now, we know that this is an eight-year-old Alicia because this is inside the episode stuff I'm going to break down here for you. It was very difficult to write Alicia's last episode. So what does that mean for the character? Is she going to come back in the final season? I hope so. I would think so, but I guess she needs a break. They didn't kill her off. She can always come back. So she's been there since the beginning. And Alicia is one of the original OG characters. And I have to say, she's one of my favorite OG characters that's still left on the show. So of course it's tough working with Alicia. And he says, Alicia's journey was all about this moment. So the whole story was her to say goodbye to Strand, was to essentially save kind of this core part of herself. I thought this show was about like walkers and danger and stuff. Not Alicia's subconscious in there too. So she succumbs to the fever and passes out yet again. She wakes up seeing this bird flying over her and it's open to interpretation. Great. So that's what you focused on? Interpretation? Is the bird really there? Like who cares? It's really not that meaningful and impactful that you focus on stuff like this. Focus on better stuff, I'm guessing, right? Did she really free the bird from the tower? Is it her subconscious? I mean, it's kind of cool, but also kind of cheesy. We're gonna talk about subconscious things and there for her final episode. But either way, she's trying to go on her journey to guide herself. And, you know, we really wanted to build this kind of thing up, reawakening of Alicia, like she reawoke. Okay, great. But how'd the fever just go away? Like she was bit, she was doing terrible, but now she solved her stuff and I don't know, she's got this newfound strength, which is great. Why? Because she said bye to her friends, to her people that she loves and cares about. And she talked to herself. She saved the bullet out of fear of turning and she used it to kill the walker, which is a sign that she can take care of this walker and she's gonna beat these things. She's, so she's beaten it. She survived, which is cool. You know what would have been better? Among other things, among a bunch of things, but she's going to live and she arises and walks off as a triumphant hero. But it would have been better if she killed herself with the lone bullet. But that didn't happen. She survived, triumphant hero, on to the next one. Let me know your thoughts, post your comments below. Like, share, subscribe, support the PT channel when you can. Stay safe, and as always, tell them, Daryl. Yo, we love you guys. Honestly, thank you.